Blunt Talk with LT episode 34. This episode is brought to you by StackWap.com. StackWap.com slash shop for your finest apparel. All right, so we're going to get into it. Crazy shit's been going on. Crazy shit's been going on. The first thing I'm going to get into is this Adam 22 shit. So basically, Adam 22 is reporting a podcast for a no jumper. You know, it's no jumper podcast. He was recording and then this shit happened. Let me just play this video. Start this shit off real quick. Wow, Adam, big there boy. There we go. It feels like it's all oh, your fucking money. Look. <laughs> right now, right now. You want to go right now? You want to go? I was never planning on doing like, I don't even understand what was going on here. Adam was laughing. Yo, yo, yo. We're gonna have to be. We're gonna have to come back soon. <sighs> Holy shit! Why didn't he shoot? Why didn't he shoot? Now he's out cold. We gotta call the cops. We're gonna have to come back for all these other donations, okay, dude. Ended there. Okay, so basically, Adam explained it on TMZ that his security guard that was usually. Well, not security guard. The guy that he has employed with the strap he was usually at the front door guarding the gates and he wasn't there or something happened and some guy snuck through the back with a gun while he was on live stream. See, that's the thing. He was on live stream. He thought it was a prank, so he was laughing. That was probably the best thing for him to think that it was a prank and react in the way he reacted, laughing and giggling and putting his hands up in front and wavering and stuff like that because had he have been serious... And, you know, he came and he knew it wasn't a joke and he tried to strike the man or take the gun. Or if he, you know, physically tried to, you know, take it from him, who knows if the man would have just squeezed out of fear because he felt like, you know, he would have got the gun taken away from him and possibly shot. But the guy got beat up. The, the tape shows, there's more tape. It shows the guy on the ground. They're stomping him out or kicking him when he, like, wakes up after being knocked out. Uh, they called the cops. They handled the situation accordingly. I don't know what the fuck this guy was doing running up in his studio. Like, these, these, you got to make sure you have your security on deck if you, you're renting a location and you have a studio or, or if you, you know, you own an external studio or whatever and you're doing your stuff and you're bringing a lot of artists and a lot of people through your studio. It's like what happened with um, Dungeon Studios. When they, you know, got shot up a bunch of times and a bunch of beefs and a bunch of rat, a bunch of shit happens. That's what happens when, I don't know, man. You always have to have your security tight. When you're a uh, a celebrity, even if you're not an A-lister, you're a B-lister and you're doing things like this in the entertainment field, you have to have your security on deck. This is America. You can have your guns. Um. Yeah. That shit is super fucked up. Good for the guy. Good thing they stomped his bitch ass out. Good thing Adam 22 didn't get shot, although he said, why didn't he shoot? He was confused because he thought it was a prank. Like, why didn't he shoot? That's just, that's a weird first instinct to have. Why didn't he shoot? But Adam 22 held it down there. I think he held it down. He was laughing. Yeah, of course. He thought it was a prank. He was like, what the hell's going on here? He wasn't serious. Yeah, he didn't get scared. He didn't bitch up in the situation. He was just like, whatever, man. Continued to stream after, spoke on it, continued his shit, went on with his day, did a TMZ interview. When you have real situations like that and people point guns at you and it could have been serious and you could have been dead, if you come from a certain background or you come from, like, you know, impoverished areas or you come from the grind, the struggle, or whatever the fuck you come from, if you come from a hood, that type of shit, you could actually continue with your day. Like, you're, you're, you're wired in a way where it's like, okay, that shit's fucked up, but hey, I didn't die, I didn't get shot. Why didn't he shoot? Whatever, fuck it. Let's continue this live stream. If you're not from that life or you're not comfortable in those type of areas, that's why you can tell Adam Twenty Two is, he's from some sort of life. He's not like 
if you're not from that life, you'll be shook up. You'll be on the radio station crying in front of Angie Martinez, like Safari, <laughs> if you're not about that life and you're not from that life. Like, that's what will happen to you if you get into incidents like that. It'll shake you up. It'll have you super fucked up. But when you're from that life, you shake that shit off and you continue your job because fucked up shit happens. But you know this world. You've been through shit in your life. You've been through these types of struggles. You've probably been had guns point Like, he's probably had a gun pointing at him before in his life. And if not, then he handled it well. Although, he, you know, some people be like, oh, he bitched. He didn't bitch up. He was laughing. He was like, hey, hey, he didn't know what the fuck was going on. He was like, what the hell's... He expected his security guy to be there. So he, he probably thought, uh, like, you know, nothing's getting by this motherfucker. So that's definitely some fake shit. He probably thought it was some cap. And, you know, it's a prank. But he even said it on the on TMZ that he thought it was a prank. He didn't take it too seriously initially. That's fucked up, man. You got to get your um your studio security proper. I'm not saying he doesn't have it proper, but incidents like that. Man could have took your life. We don't know who that crazy motherfucker was. Shit is insane. All right, so, holy fuck, this eyelash is tormenting my eye. Holy. Oh! Okay, so before we get to the Yes, Jules, Murder Mook shit, we have Meg Thee Stallion just got a record deal. People are hating on her because she got a record deal. You guys weren't hating on Cardi when she got a record deal. So I don't understand, like, people trying to tell Meg Thee Stallion do one thing. It's like, come on, man. That's some bullshit. You can't tell her to do one thing. Let her live. She's making her way in the indi- in the in the industry in the entertainment industry. She's getting multiple bags. Let the girl live. If she wants to rap, let her rap. Like no one said shit about Cardi when she made transitions. So it's like it seems like, but that's what people. That's what certain people had problems with Cardi initially with the acceptance. It's not like they were hating on Cardi, but they're like, this doesn't happen to for black girls or dark skinned girls. And if they conducted themselves the way she did, she they wouldn't get as far. They wouldn't get far at all, basically. They'd have no career. They'd have a bunch of hate. And I understand that line of thinking because we're seeing certain things with, like, Meg Thee Stallion. People just hating for no reason. I barely know who she is. She popped up. She got buzzing. She's doing her thing. Let her live. Like, the hate comes too early. Usually the hate comes when you you already made it and they built you up and now they want to tear you down because that's where the hate comes for Cardi. She didn't have nearly the type of hate that Meg Thee Stallion has to begin with, though. So... I understand why people are up in arms or and they're, they're just pissed off. Her fans are just pissed off. They're not having it. All right. Um shit. Yeah, let's this let's just do this yes, Jules, murder mook shit. Let's do this breakdown. Um I have videos. I'm not going to play the videos, and I, t- I talked about this last episode because sometimes when I play videos, play too many videos, things get stripped down, copyrights. This is a podcast on YouTube, so I'm pretty sure they have their copyrights and shit up, so I'm not going to play the video. I'm just going to squeeze in the audio right here, so let's get it. I mean, and those are my friends, and I help them get artists to perform. I help them get sponsors. And I you put in the work. You put yeah, in the work. Yeah, put in the work. That's why I'm hosting, you know, so people okay. feel that I should not be in certain positions that I'm in in this community or culture Ooh, you, got, get you, could, you can say their names and shit on here that's what i'm saying um scotty beam um karen civil um a lot of people feel that i shouldn't be doing what i'm doing mm-hmm. it should be them instead but we all do very different things me and karen do not do the same thing contradiction i don't give a fuck about doing dinners at louis vuitton i don't give a fuck about doing a radio show every single day my interests are different from scotty's my interests are different from theirs you know but i enjoy giving people experiences i enjoy hosting stuff so Anyways. So just to, to ask a clarifying question there, like, do you think that you did anything before that to give them a reason? So or yeah, I'm gonna just get, because so, you're... So here I'm going to get to, so when I was 19, mm. there was, you remember, there was the hashtags black thoughts and white thoughts. Okay, yeah, she went and explained herself. She kind of tried to cover up their whole black thoughts and white thoughts after that, that clip cut out. And she tried to reframe the conversation and basically cover up her bullshit from what she did in the past from her racial baiting if anybody knows who yes jules is which i barely know who she is i vaguely remember and then i just did research and kind of looked up her history she's been accused and not even accused she's been guilty of a lot of 
racist type of stuff and race baiting and disrespecting black girls and talking about her love for black men and black men's love for her while disrespecting black women. She's done a lot of this type of stuff in the past. Um, okay, I'm going to play another clip before I break down. Yeah. Oop, not the clip. Shit, let me do this again. Um... Damn. There we go. I want to talk about, so you said Joe and uh, the dinner. We still ain't get to that. <laughs> so what happened with Joe Buns and the dinner? I was being a smartass, but he just used to hit me to hang out, and I couldn't because I was busy, and I, I don't know what if that, you know what I'm saying, if that transpired into the oh, for me okay. or what. But. Hit you like what? What times of the days would it be? Like this time? Like. <laughs> Let's see if I still got some old messages. Joe? Oh, there's Joe now. Look at Get this bitch off the fucking podcast right now. No, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, you got messages? Oh, shit. Well, I don't know if I do this If you do, you don't be apologetic for nothing you do. Remember we said that today. <laughs> I really hope that my my iCloud still got this shit. Oh, he did? <laughs> it ain't raining in iCloud, trust me. <laughs> you said it ain't raining in iCloud? <laughs> that was legendary. <laughs> that was legendary. That was legendary. Sometimes we just said legendary know. shit on the easily offended no, show. That was legendary. Um, and I didn't say I like you because you said you was going to give us some money either. Just to let you know. <laughs> um, I don't like people that, that you know, I work with. Well, she said she was going to sponsor. <laughs> I don't know. It's not, it's not coming up. But, um... But the point is, is that point is, is that Joe never had a problem with me till he had a girl that had a problem with me, and that's whack and it's fake. I don't give a fuck if I fuck with you. Did he try to bone? He never tried to bone. He was just like, "Yo, Joe was like, let's hang out." You know what I mean? And I was just like, "I'm in meetings." Like what time? Like Like where? Like, I'm trying to cause I don't trying know. Yo, I'm not, it, 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 I'm not saying he was trying to fuck. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying he was trying to be a friend that was around and trying to hang out with me, and we never were able to hang out. And then all of a sudden, he has a girlfriend, and all of a sudden, I am getting surgeries and doing all this shit. When we did our first podcast, he asked me if my ass was real, and then confirmed, and then he was like, "Nah, her ass is real. Y'all need to stop hanging." Blah blah blah. Then all of a sudden, you're with Sensei Atana, and my ass is fake, and I got all this shit. Like, no, you whack as fuck. Your girl's insecure. I'm sorry, like, you could just be like, yo, I can't talk to you because I have a girlfriend. You don't have to go out your way to do all this shit. Right. Give, give one a juice. <laughs> juice. Yeah. That, um, okay. Knowing Joe, Joe has a lot of female friends. Um, Joe has a lot of industry female friends. Joe doesn't have any problems conversing or doing any type of business with his female friends and it doesn't seem like sin has a problem with that she understands the industry for one from seeing their under from just getting their general understanding of where their relationship is at um another thing uh mook okay so mook is getting flamed on twitter getting flamed on everything right now flamed on other podcasts he's just getting flamed all over the place he's he, people said he sabotaged his career he ruined his image he did this and that this this and that what I see from this is, okay, first of all, the first thing that's wrong with this interview, she started off the interview with a conflict of interest. She first said she was going to sponsor their podcast, first conflict of interest. Mook was concerned about the bag. Let me get the bag. Let me touch this bag. Let me touch this bag. Always talking about the money. So it seemed like he had a positive bias towards her and giving her the benefit of the doubt in situations where she clearly didn't deserve it. And she's been a perpetrator in the past and it seems like she continues to perpetrate these racial lines and um that's the thing throughout the interview she she slipped up a bunch of times and said a bunch of things that were you just raise your eye and you're like what that is racial that is weird to say um the niggas lie a lot t-shirt that she brought out that was also some racist shit there's plenty of instances of her on twitter disrespecting black women and having racist shit they got at um Mook for not standing up for Karen Civil and um, Scotty Beam, and I don't I don't fault Mook for not defending them. As much as they say, oh, you got to defend the, the black women, you got to defend them. If he doesn't know them from a hole in the wall, he doesn't know anything about them. He has. I feel like he has no right. Well, he knows Karen Civil. He doesn't know. He spoke about not knowing too much about Cardi B. Uh, not Cardi Beam. Scotty Beam and um her history of what she's done for black women and women in general. So he didn't really know much about them to be caping for them. He pretty much said in the Van Lathan interview when he was trying to cover, basically, uh, basically trying to uh, 
damage control the situation on Vla- on Van Lathan's podcast. He said that he doesn't know them from a hole in the wall to basically defend them. The bigger issue was he d- he didn't defend his own. Well, the, b- the biggest problem with people are seeing with Mook is he didn't defend black people. He didn't stand up for black people, didn't stand up for black women. He pushed her into race stuff. She was cool on relaxing on stuff. She was trying to stray away from it. And Mook was kind of trying to feed the controversy, trying to get comments from her, trying to get her to want to say the word nigga. She's like, say the N-word. Whether with the E-R or the A, doesn't matter. She wasn't supposed to say it. She said that she's not allowed to say it. She said she's white. She wouldn't say it. And he's like, no, you're Spanish and Italian. You're not white. Say it. Like, he was trying to force the nigga in her mouth. Like, pause. (laughs) <laughs> he was trying to force the word out of her And it's like that's what people had problems with It's like if she had racial Issues in the past And she's had things where it was in the gray area And she's trying to stay away from it Because she's trying to do better now Why do you feel the need to constantly push her And egg her on and trying to make her Feel the need to he, he spoke about not wanting to make people feel bullied And this that and that And people controlling because sometimes the media and um, society will basically force people into this group think. I understand what he's saying by that, but he took the incom- the complete wrong approach in what he was doing. Um, if nobody, if people don't know who Murder Mook is, and this is the first time seeing him, it's not a good look for him personally. His whole personality, his look, the way the way he acted, the way he conducted the interview. It wasn't a good look for him. Um, the dislike bar says so. It's destroyed with dislikes. Who knows if that's Joe Budden fans coming from the podcast? Because she also, yes, Jules also disrespected Sin Santana, saying she was insecure and she's this, that, and that. And yes, Jules kept talking about herself having a big ass and this, this, and that. But I've seen past. I for me, I looked at her, and from the interview, I'm like, she doesn't. It doesn't look like she has a fake ass because it didn't look like there was much there. I went on her Instagram and I searched her pictures and she has a bit of an ass, but I looked at the past pictures too and the past pictures, it wasn't there. It was much flatter. It's nothing significant to the point where people will be hate. The thing is, that's why I didn't think it was fake initially because I didn't think it was anything like significant for other women to be like hating on her. And women don't even, other women weren't hating on her regardless if it was a significant ass, but... For her to come for Sin Santana and say she's insecure, that is just some... For me, that hit me left field because that was weird. She didn't seem like she had anything to do with the situation. The situation always seemed like it's them from her and Joe. She brought up earlier some, uh, some uh, what do you call it, story about uh, the sweatpants that he returned or try, basically trying to shame him and embarrass him. No, for me... I don't care about Yes Jules. I don't care about anything she says because I don't know her. I don't know what she does. I, there's nothing. There's no platform that I'm entertaining. I don't see her on a regular basis. She just popped up for that interview. Most people's major concern and major problem with that interview was Murder Mook. People were not satisfied with the way Mook represented his community or represented himself. They were saying just like even the whole happy ending situation. He was talking about his wife would let him get happy endings. And the shit he was talking like, I don't know. So it was just not a good look. People say he didn't under, he didn't rep Harlem properly. He didn't represent us properly. Mook took an L, all sorts of shit. You're just going on Mook. It was not a good day for Mook. Mook basically, Mook displayed what you're not supposed to do to get your podcast hot. That's what you're not supposed to do. You're not supposed to reach for things. You're not trying. You're not supposed to try to force the controversy. You're not supposed to air out the pub, the the conflict of interest in the beginning. So you already come for for me to hear the interview to start off. I already had a negative bias because I'm like, oh, this bitch is gonna be a sponsor, like she's sponsoring the podcast. You guys are gonna give her an unfair shake. You're gonna dick ride her. You're gonna let her get away with saying the most disrespectful things, and you're gonna let it live. A lot of racial shit, a lot of... And Mook disrespected black women, too, when she said something about black women. And Mook was like, these bitches is hella annoying, too. And he has a black wife and a black daughter. When Mook was talking, I thought he wasn't married to a black woman. 
He said he had a wife, and I'm like, oh, that's some different type of woman. Because the way he was talking and the way he was disrespecting black women, you would have never thought he actually has a black woman. Just off of the disrespect. Very, very weird. All right, so we're going to get into um, this last thing before we get out of here. We're going to get into Kodak Black speaking on Young and May. And people are saying that um, Kodak Black is coming off like a harasser coming off super rapey. I said that watching this video that I'm about to play that he came off super rapey in this video and predatorial and not a good look. And people are saying, no wonder this nigga has a rape case because he's acting weird. Young and May is a lesbian. She doesn't want no parts of you. What you're doing is harassment. So let me play this video. It feel good to know that somebody love you out there. I know more people love me than hate me. More people love me than hate me. And I do more good than I do bad. I do a lot of uh stuff. But I do I do I do more good than I do bad. And more people love me than hate me. I'm talking about how you a girl but don't want your pussy penetrated. Hot. <laughs> Yo, what's up with y'all? Y'all good though? Y'all vibing? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Don't be mad at me because I want you, baby. Be mad at me because I want you. Y'all chilling though? I'm talking about a bitch. You better leave out of the emergency. <laughs> huh? You better leave out of the emergency. What the fuck, what the fuck was that? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what I mean, yo. What do you mean? What do you mean, fam? Like, what the fuck, nigga? What the fuck? You better leave out the emergency exit. Are you a girl and you don't like to be penned? What the fuck are you saying, my nigga? Like, that's super rapey. Like, how does he not understand that? And you have these mothers, these dumbass motherfuckers on this Instagram live condoning it, sending a heart, sending thumbs up, sending whatever the fuck they're sending, condoning that type of behavior. It's like your fans are the reason why you're getting into trouble because these dumbass motherfuckers is co-signing every stupid shit you do. Like, if, yo, listen, the girl's a lesbian. She's butch. She's fucking girls. Well, she don't want no problems. She wants no parts of you. She kept telling you to keep your name on the mouth, disrespect this and that. She's a rapper. She has bars too. So it's like, why are you coming after Young Ame so hard? Like, let her live, fam. Like, yo, Kodak is on. He's on some shit, bro. I don't know if he has pending cases or whatever is still going on with his legal situation, but he needs to be careful because a lot of these type of things will sway uh, jury judges' opinion of you because they're seeing you with all this fuck shit and all this mess and drama and antagonizing people and talk about how you're a woman and don't want to be penetrated. Like, all that shit is a little... It's gone a little too far. I have a lot of drama. A lot of drama to report on. Uh, maybe next episode we're going to get into this love and hip-hop shit because I have some love and hip-hop clips because basically people are tired of Mona Scott having the legends look like shit, but these legends are doing it to themselves at the end of the day. I was going to play a clip of Trina and... Trick Daddy going at each other and disrespecting their entire legacy with their verbal shots and the type of attacks that they're taking on each other. You can't really go back from that type of shit. Um, next episode, because I didn't see the whole conflict. I seen the clip. So next episode might have T2 Lovely on, might not. Regardless, we're going we're gonna to delve into the love and hip-hop shit because we didn't get enough time to get through it this episode, nor do I care to squeeze it in without being fully educated on the situation. So I got to go watch that reunion and see what the hell happened. We had a couple of people getting out of character. You had Rich jumping over the table uh, to get at Safari. We had Safari talking tough about Joe. We had a bunch of shit going on. So I got to go check out that reunion. And next episode, we're going to have a full recap on that shit. Yep. Uh, what else do we got to get to before I get out of here? Uh, let's just check the docket before. Um, okay, so this YouTuber, Lily Singh from Canada, has a late night show on NBC now. She got signed off of YouTube. So straight from YouTube, being a YouTuber, putting your shit out on YouTube, having your show on YouTube, led to a success full late night talk show i know you're gonna be she's gonna be a really late night where people don't really watch too much but at the end of the day a late night show is basically what all these radio hosts and all these people are building and aspiring to so if you're off of youtube and you have a su successful youtube page that led you to late night television do your thing girl do your thing you're putting in that work and you're from canada uh she's indian canadian let's go let's go we got it we out here all right stackwap.com 
Uh, what else we got here for Blunt Talk with LT episode 34? Um, that's it. Stackwap.com. Stackwap.com slash shop. Yerp.